This is the closest I'm going to get to being a Navy SEAL. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is 4.30. I can officially call it morning because I have my coffee. I'm outside. It's barely five o'clock. I've been up since 4.30. You might be asking why I'm up at 4.30 in the morning. I just want to challenge myself to try some new things. I was watching a very inspiring YouTube video about a Navy SEAL. He's a retired Navy SEAL and he still um, uses a lot of the same routines that he learned when he was a Navy SEAL. Number one, just out on a practical side, if you wake up early in the morning, like at 4.30 in the morning, you're gonna have some free time to yourself to make things happen, to take care of things that are important to you. Let's say you're the most ultra motivated guy in the world. When that alarm clock goes off, there's at least 50% of the time where you just, that, that soft little pillow is just caressing your head and you want to stay there. And it takes discipline to go, nope, I'm going to get up out of this bed and I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. And that discipline that you have at that moment, you win that fight. That's a big victory. And then that, that, that pattern will carry out throughout the day. Because once you're up, well, now that I'm up, I might as well go work out because I'm already up and I, I feel good that I got up out of bed and I won that battle. Let me go win another battle. I'll keep you posted on how all this goes today, especially towards the end of the day if I get really tired since I am up about an hour and a half earlier, actually, yeah, about an hour and a half earlier than normal. Levi, on the other hand, is not participating in the Navy SEAL challenge. We are waiting for school, to, the gates at the school to open. Say good morning. Mama. What? Did you know those, I saw her buy them at Walmart or Publix, but I don't know which store. Yeah? Are you talking about the triangle cookies? Yes. Okay, everybody help me out here. Ava keeps talking about these triangle cookies, and they come in a blue box, and there's two sleeves in the box, and I have no idea what she's talking about. There's not sleeves in it. Those little bags were the triangle cookies. Yeah. And when if you see blue frosting and pink frosting, that means if if I say decorate it, then you could pick which color. You could put frosting on the top so it could taste gooder. Okay. Wow. So it is now about. Let's see. What time is it anyway? Eight o'clock. And. So I've been up since 4.30. Now on my way to take Levi to tour a nursery school. Um, just to kind of share a little bit of the journey with Levi, um, you may notice in the vlogs that he is a little bit chatty, but not super chatty. <laughs> He's a man of few words. So Levi is starting speech therapy, actually has a uh, speech on Tuesdays and Thursdays right now for like a half an hour. And he really does take really, really well to the therapy. Um, he's not on the autism spectrum at all, but he does need just a little bit of help to encourage him. He probably, the speech therapist said he probably would just pick it up naturally on his own even without it but the therapy helps, can't hurt. So that's what we're doing. And one of the things that she recommended is to put Levi in nursery school. So he's like two and a half now, and he's never been to school before. Uh, he's always either been with me or with grandma. Um, it's kind of like throwing a kid to the wolves a little bit because they are out of their comfort zone. In order to, like, I naturally, I can look at him and tell what he wants. Uh, my grandmother, even more so, she's, you know, one of 16 children, so, and she was the first, so she got lots of experience with what a baby needs, what a child needs, and she
that she can almost like read his mind. She's so good at, you know, raising kids. But the problem is the speech therapist says that we are catering too much. And it's, you know, we don't even realize we're doing it. We're just, you know, taking care of him. So Levi being my third child, um, you know, he, he's been a little bit, just a little bit spoiled. It's not a bad thing. It's just, this is kind of part of the effort to get him out of his comfort zone a little bit and get him around people who aren't going to be able to read his mind so that he will be encouraged to express himself and start talking. And being around other kids is good for him socially too. So this is kind of going to be, um, perhaps... Levi may, Levi may start school this week. So this could be his very first week of school. We'll see. I'll know um, after I tour the school kind of what the schedule's going to be. But that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. So, uh, so we'll see. Just put this in the slow cooker. It's right before 10 a.m. And this is going to be dinner. It will be, it's called Easy Crock Pot Carnitas. I got it from the Pinch of Yum blog. Easy Crock Pot Carnitas. So it's going to cook for about eight hours. It'll be done a little bit before six. And then I'll take the meat out, shred it, and then put it under the broiler to kind of crisp the edges because that's the way you want your carnitas. And we're going to serve it with limes for tacos. Yum. Lime so Yay. Thank you. Perfect. Let's try this tea here. I think I need more tea. I hope so. <laughs> okay, explain everything you have here. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> my egg is bigger than my plate here. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, ma'am. there in her little kitchen area and all I hear is clang 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 bang 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 <laughs> yes. all right here you go I'm full the cat sat in my hat I never forget that okay you got that one <laughs> next one is there more pages yeah there's one right here okay that. No. Okay. Start with the top one right here. Ah, uh, but we do not see this word inside the book. Oh. Oh. Ah. Uh, huh. Sound this one out. Starts with an N. What sound does an N What's make? We did O. Oh. Oh. Yes. <coughs> okay. Oh. Oh. Um, no. Oh, no. All right, do this one. Sk. 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 Good. <laughs> okay. Scat rat. <laughs> Scat rat. Okay, so this is my 9 p.m. check-in. I have now been up since 4.30 in the morning this morning, and I just want to let you know how it's going. I kind of expected to be dragging by this point because I've had a very busy day. And I'm going to tell you the best thing about getting up early, especially if you tend to be a productive morning person, and I'm not saying you are a morning person, but once you get going, if you are a very productive person in the morning, this might be the thing for you. Studies indicate that night owls aren't really doing a lot at night other than vegging, watching TV, and eating actually more than they should be. Um, and that's not coming from me. That is what studies are showing that, you know, yeah, they might consider themselves a night owl, but it's because they stay up for many, many hours past when their kids go to bed or past when they really should be in bed because they're just catching up on TV and things like that, which I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but everything in moderation. When you get up early in the morning, even if you're not a morning person per se, you're giving yourself an opportunity to wake up a little bit slower and be awake for those quiet moments before the cell phones start, before the emails start coming in, and before you have to be at work. Now you have time to do your side business or research that dream of yours that you've been wanting to chase, but you don't have any other time because by the time you get home from work and you're taking care of kids and then you watch TV at night because you're just kind of tired from the day, that's the point. You might be a night owl, but the day makes you tired and those are not the hours to be doing all that research. And that is what science shows. I also want to break in to say I got everything on my to-do list done in that period of time. This is actually the next day that I'm vlogging this little part, but everything that was on my to-do list for day one of getting up at 4.30, and I, you know, it was just a normal day list, and normally I'm carrying over a lot of things from one day to the next, and then what happens at the end of the week is you start prioritizing, okay, this thing is on fire now, so I have to, to deal with this. 
that didn't happen yesterday. Everything got done and it was pretty amazing. And I'm thinking, well, gosh, you know, how much could I do if I'm like this four to five days a week? It's not so much about the productivity. It's about the freedom that just getting your stuff done and getting up early, the freedom that it gives you to do the things that you would like to do, the meaningful things, some meaningful time with the family on the weekends and stuff like that. So anyway, this was the end of vlog one. Thank you for joining me today. Please like my channel. Please subscribe and uh, stay tuned for day six vlog. I'll be waking up at 4.30 again.